that is how you take this vintage skateboard and turn it into a 3D model. Have you ever had an object that you wanted to make a perfect 3D model out of, but it was just too complex to design? Or maybe you have a really complex or highly detailed model that you want to 3D scan and just have a 3D model of it. Or maybe you want to do part validation and see how close your parts are coming out to the intended specifications. Well, today we're going to show you exactly how to do those things with the EinScan Pro 2X Plus, the included software and Geomagic Essentials. So basically the scanner package comes with all of these dots, literally thousands of dots, and they have little adhesive backings on it. Now this is great because you can actually reuse them, but we're basically going to put these about every two to four inches apart in a random pattern. It's really important that you do it in a random pattern because if it's in a in a pattern that could be recognized by the scanner while you're scanning, it could stitch things together in the wrong way. So you just do a random pattern and then you're safe from that. Now I'm not gonna put any dots on the little edges. I'm only gonna put them on the flat surfaces. Right, Dan? Yep, you wanna stay away from your edges because what happens is the actual software will recognize our dots for our features to align everything. And what it actually does is when it scans, it cuts out that little dot that it just saw. And then, once it tries to align the scans and put them together, it'll refill in that hole. But sometimes you put them close to the edge, it'll mess up that edge that's trying to patch back together. So, that's why we're trying to stay as far away as possible from our edges. Now we've got our dots on there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and head back. We're gonna go and click our scan mode. Now we're gonna do our handheld HD scan. So, rapid scan mainly, it's fast, it's really good for objects that have distinctive features. Mm -hmm. So, it works really well on larger objects. However, the HD, handheld HD scan, because it has the markers to align, it's more accurate than the rapid scan, but it's a lot harder to use on the bigger objects, mainly because you don't want to spend all that time putting dots on a massive statue, so you use the rapid scan instead. And because we just have a small object here, it only took a few minutes to go and put dots on, we can go ahead and get a really accurate scan with the HD scan. So we're going to go ahead and click on our new work. There we go. You can change what resolution you want. We're just gonna go ahead and leave it in the middle for now. And we don't actually have a global markers file, so we're just gonna hit apply. It's gonna create a new project. And then we go ahead and start just like we did last time. So we're gonna go ahead and start our scan preview by hitting the play button again. So it's saying no markers detected, but now that we've got four markers in the screen, it's actually previewing it. So I'm gonna double tap so we can adjust the brightness, make sure we get everything that we need to. So we'll go ahead and hit the play button. And I'll scan. You can see those little red dots that are actually, and red and green dots on the screen. Those are the actual markers that it's seeing. So if you notice with this one, it's not actually picking up the glass at all. It's just picking up the markers and the board itself. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and check to see if we have any rogue data. So like random points that are way off from, away from the board, just so we can delete those and they won't end up messing with it. So we look here. Got a few, those look like they're a few rogue points, but I think those should end up flattening out. It's a little rough around the edges, but what we can do is we can go ahead and hit and generate point clouds, and it'll show us exactly what it is and how it's creating our little mesh that, and our all of those points and evening it out and smoothing it out for us. Usually this takes like, what, a minute? 30, yeah. 30 seconds to a minute? Yeah. What's the longest I've seen time that I've seen this take? Eh, probably two to three minutes with a really, really large part. Now it's it's missing the the marker area. So can we use that since it's a totally flat surface and then just go to the next side? Or like do we need on this totally flat side to move the dots and do it again? Um, it really depends. If you want to be super duper accurate, you can go ahead and move the dots and then do another scan so it'll cover itself. But in this case, I think we should be good since it's super flat, and even if it does give us a few bumps, we can always edit those out in Geomagic Essentials. So I say we're good to go ahead and do another scan just to the back and then we can go ahead and put those together See if there's anything else we need to change or any more scans we have to do So now we can go ahead and edit our point clouds which these ones all look pretty good fun thing You can actually see the writing on the board directly on there because it's a different color and specifically because it's white and reflects a ton of light Versus the blue which doesn't reflect as much You can see our markers that it was actually tracking the entire time you can see we have a few wild points. 
But first, I want to go ahead and generate my point clouds, and then we'll go ahead and edit it to see whether we actually need to cut some points out or leave them there and they'll be fine and get smoothed over. So this time, it actually smoothed over all those random points that we saw that we didn't like. So, it's looking pretty good, though around where those dots were, we do have some weird things happening. So we have those little dots that look like they're above the actual part. Like that. So then we hit our shift, and there we go, got two of them. So we hit our apply edit. Now it's going to process and try to actually align, auto-align itself to try and figure out how everything's going to be. So, let's see. It has completely messed up our alignment. But that's okay, because we can go ahead and manually align. Here we go here to our align button, over there on the right side below the play and the generate point clouds button. Go here, so then we go ahead and drag and drop our data. So product one goes there, and that's going to be our fixed, so that one's not actually going to be moving. Then we drop our project two in there, and that's the one that's actually going to be moving around to orient itself with the fixed point cloud. Reason why they have that is, for example, if you have five different projects. You set one to be always be your fixed one, and then you go ahead and orient the other ones based on your fixed one. So that way it always has one fixed part. So the way you do this is you create three pairs of common points. So the one thing that we have in common in these two scans is the side. So we're going to go ahead and do the back side of it. So then we're going to go ahead and look here. So right about the same area as that one, and put that one right there. And now it's going to go ahead and align itself. There we go. Now we got our board nice and aligned correctly. You can see there are, it looks like there are a few holes in the side that we're probably going to have to patch up, especially in the front. So it looks like we're going to end up having to do another scan. But oh well, that's fine. There we have our nice and aligned data. We want to make sure we get those sides really nice and covered, so we're going to go ahead and do one more scan. So you can see it's kind of filling in a lot more down towards the bottom edge than we had before, which is good. We need that. So as you can see, we got these sides much, much, much better. So we're going to go ahead and look. Looks like our top was lacking on that side there. So we're going to go ahead and minimize that, click on project one, and then flip it over and redo it specifically right here. So we're going to make sure we focus on getting this edge here. So for these holes, which you can do in the Einscan software, if you're trying to do quick and easy, you can do auto hole filling and see what it'll do. Well, it fixed that one, but as you can see, our perimeter of 100 was able to go ahead and detect this hole and fix it, but doesn't really match up our curvature very well. It got these flat parts really, really nice and smooth, but unfortunately on all the curves, you get these weird ridges, which that's one of the downsides of using the smooth button way too many times in the Einscan software. Your flats look beautiful, but if you have any nice curves, they're gonna get kind of they're gonna get these ridges and get ruined. So I'm gonna reset and close. So I just want to go ahead and send this directly to GeoMagic, and we'll go ahead and fix it there. So hit your third-party software button, hit your GeoMagic, and this goes right into it, and it just opens it up for you perfectly. First thing we're gonna do. Hit our mesh doctor. So it says we have 14 self intersections, 66 highly creased edges, and 187 spikes. So, first thing we do after all those are highlighted in red, we hit plot. And now all those are fixed. You'll see that little spike right there, that one random piece of data. That will get fixed with our mesh doctor, which is really nice. And boom, it's gone. For our flat surface, we're actually going to use our crease angle selection tool. So what's cool about that is you can just go ahead and click on your flat surface, drag up, and it'll slowly select more of your flat surface. So now we hit our defeature tool. Boom. Completely flat. So this one isn't working very well with our defeature tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the remesh, and we're going to click refine. So by doing a four times subdivision, what we're going to do is we're going to take every single triangle that's in the model and then divide that triangle into four separate triangles. So that way we can maybe smooth out edges a little bit better and not get those weird bumps. So we're going to hit apply. If you notice down here we have 158,000 triangles at the moment. We hit apply. Now we have 633,000. So now that we've made our flat surfaces nice and pretty 
relatively flat, we're going to go and hit our reduce noise. So what reduce noise is, it takes all these weird bumps here and tries to smooth them all out. So you can use freeform shapes, prismatic shapes conservative, and prismatic shapes aggressive. We're going to go ahead and go with our prismatic shapes because this isn't a very organic um, object, it's more mechanical. So we're going to do a prismatic shapes aggressive. So what you can do is you can say what smoothness level you want. We want to do max. And iterations is how many times it's going to make it work to that smoothness level. So we're going to do five iterations. And hit apply. And see what happens. Boom. Much, much smoother than before. Looks like we do have a few in the crease and on those top edges there that we do have to fix a little bit. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and take our sandpaper tool and just go ahead and smooth that out a bit. Nice and smooth and pretty. It's looking good. So now we go ahead and say it looks great. We're gonna go ahead and hit our Mesh Doctor button. It's gonna go ahead and check everything out. And because we increased our triangles, we have a lot of problems. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Apply. There we go. It's gonna think and repair everything. And then boom. Actually took away a lot of our smoothness problems as well. So, we're going to go ahead and say okay, and we're done with our skateboard. Cool. All right, so that's basically it. So take the part, we try to rapid scan. We're like, you know what, let's do HD scan with the dots. We did it with the dots. We got that a couple different angles, and then we did a little bit of work in Ein scan software, but really just took it straight into Geomagix, got mm -hmm. rid of all the little weird stuff and everything else, uh, the bumps and the divots and the extra points and whatnot, and then did a little bit of work smoothing, and pretty much that was it. Yep. Now another thing we've been doing here that this is great for using GOM Inspect, G-O-M yes. Inspect, it's a free software, but you can take this scan and then you can say it was a 3D printed part, we already had an SDL. So we wanna scan the 3D printed part to check for accuracy and how perfect it is, and we can take that into GOM Inspect and basically export a version of the model that has a heat map. What is it? Uh, uh, red to yellow to green. Green is perfect. Red is off uh, by whatever your tolerances are. We can actually show exactly the tolerances of the part that was printed after the fact. All right, guys. So that is how you take this vintage skateboard, use the Einscan Pro 2X Plus Red Bundle, and turn it into a 3D model of that exact board. That is awesome. This technology has really come a long way. Now, we've messed with the stuff that's a couple hundred dollars, the scanners out there and the phone attachments, and frankly, they don't work that well. Photogrammetry is legit, but if you want something that's efficient, you can use in your business or turn into a business, then the Pro 2X Plus for under 10K is the best thing on the market that we've found, and that's why we use it in our shop. We also provide it as a service. So if you've got something you want scanned, feel free to hit us up, shoot us an email, or give us a call, we're here to help. We love hearing from you guys. So, on that note, I think we're good. Leave a comment below if you got any questions. Comment, subscribe, shoot us emails. Uh, we, we love getting questions and answering them for you guys. And with that, that's all I got. So have a positive day, and I'll see you on the next video.